I'm in dairy, dairy, wondering where will I go next. I'm on the road again, God knows I try to do my best. I'm gonna fall in love with my friend that I know I may regret. I've been busking many times, my needs have been the last, but I'm gonna live. I've been betting high for what I believe. Okay, and welcome to European News Weekly with uh, myself, Sean McGee, and uh, my co-host, Jimmy Hagen, and uh, superb engineer, obviously. Um, we're basically, we've got quite a good story today. It's, uh, it's part three of our, our kind of series so far uh, on the BP Gulf oil spill. And uh, the first uh, part of that series uh, was with Maureen Dolphany, um, who we will link to on our europeannewsweekly.wordpress.com website. Um, so basically, there was Maureen Dauphiny, and then we, on part two of our series, uh, was Scott Porter, who was a diver. Uh, Mary Dauphiny, I should say, first is, uh, was a blogger. She gave us a good overview of the whole situation, and we discussed a lot about PR stuff uh, and how the big corporations were, were coming in. And we're going to be covering this story uh, from different people, including Tricia uh, Springstead, who we have with us today. Now, basically, what, what we're seeing um, in the Gulf is a whole series of issues, and, and, and we're seeing a lot of cover-up, and this is very reminiscent of what's going on in Fukushima. Uh, and we're talking all the small technical details, how the PR companies work, and everything else. Uh, now, one of the things in Fukushima is health effects, um, and they brought in a secrecy law to stop those, uh, those uh, statistics getting out, uh, they've clamped down, they've made it illegal to talk about Fukushima at all, uh, and a load of other things. Um, so, in America, uh, we, you know, it was surprising to see that in a sort of a country like Japan, but in America, we're seeing the same thing. We're seeing the same corporations, and we're seeing uh, the fact that health effects are covered up. And we're going to be looking at these health effects being covered up with uh, with our friend uh, here, uh, Trisha Springstead, because she, what she has had from the word go, uh, and as a nurse, uh, she's been observing uh, the health effects of people in the Gulf area. And uh, this is a very interesting uh, situation that she's found herself in. She's just recently, uh, she's been doing um, sort of a lot of uh, on the ground work and what have you. and. We're going to be covering uh, one little story. Now, she's had a whistleblower came up to her and had a talk, and, uh, and we've got some information uh, showing how the uh, control of the, um, the, the, the data um, and statistics uh, to do with health uh, is being undermined um, because the proper tests aren't being done. And, and this is a, a story we covered with Scott uh, Porter a little bit, uh, but we're going to get a little bit more into it with uh, Trisha here today. Now, before we, we go into this, uh, this interview, I, just, uh, I think what we're going to do, we're going to introduce uh, Trisha, and, and I think we're just going to say, look, what were the symptoms from day one? And I think I'll start there, if that's okay, Trisha. Uh, welcome to the show. Um, Thank you. It's so good what you're doing. Um, you, you've, you're a real uh, sort of warrior in terms of uh, health, uh, you know, health uh, sort of uh, uh, trained person who's willing to step forward and, and use their talents to try and uh, sort of uh, document what's happening uh, in the Gulf. Now, can you, can you tell us, like, it, it, there's a range of symptoms, I presume. There are. Uh, and basically, um, from the start all the way up to now, uh, there's been symptoms, but are they different? Uh, have they have they evolved? Um, and, uh, and and what what was it like back in the day? You know, the Gulf oil spills happened. There's oil everywhere. The stink is in the air. Um, uh, there's Corexit being sprayed. Uh, it's, it's a chemical nightmare. And uh, and and could you sort of put us in a place? You know, uh, absolutely. Where you absolutely. maybe first discovered people were having health effects and what your situation was there. 
what what I what I first discovered first of all I was watching I watched this on TV and I got a phone call from some renegade scientists out of Los Angeles that wanted me to go get samples for them um, from Orange Beach. This was in the 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 blowout occurred in April twentieth of two thousand and ten, and in July I was up in Orange Beach um, getting try, uh, trying to obtain samples. Um, when I when I got up there, I um, I was harassed. I was pulled over. I was threatened with arrest, and I had samples in the back of my car. And there were guys in black uniforms with a patch on them, and they said, "What's in the car?" And I said, "It's really none of your business what's in the car." And they told me you were seen on the beach, and and you you were seen on the beach, and you were seen trying to obtain samples. And and I and then I said, well, it's really none of your business because I'm a seventh generation American, and I have a right to be on that beach. And so I basically used my foul mouth and got out of that one, and I was followed to the state line. Um, I got I got sick when I was up there. I came back. I I had a really really horrible sore throat. Um, I was more. I was. I, I was lethargic. I was tired. Um, I I never felt that way. I had such stamina, and I never expected for me to feel the effects that quickly. As I started digging into this, I started meeting a lot of people that worked initially in the oil spill, and they had um, visual problems, brain fog, neurological problems, twitching. I mean the I could, I, you could see them twitching, and I had never seen this before in my life in, in, you know, in common people on the street. And they would have neurological problems, their brain fog, they couldn't remember anything. They were very emotionally labile, meaning that, you know, from one minute to the next, they went from, from extreme fright to tears to panic. And, and it's because they were toxic. So what I did was I came back home and I met Ricky Ott. Dr. Ricky Ott came into Hernando County, which is where I lived at the time. You have to realize I was, I was married. I, w I had my own business. I was married to a physician. Um, I didn't realize what I was getting myself into, but nonetheless, I wasn't going to be silenced. I was going to get to the bottom or the root of it. So what I did was I met with Dr. Ricky Ott and, and I spent some time with her. This was very early on. And the day that I met with Ricky Ott, and I have the video of me talking to her, um, but I met with her and the day I met with her, she started telling me exactly how BP was going to roll this out. She had the rule book. So, Anyways, we started talking about all these illnesses, and that day, a captain from, I believe it was Orange Beach, committed suicide on his boat. This is very early on in the spill. And then I started hearing from workers that were very, very sick, and Ricky Ott had blown out her adrenals in the Exxon Valdez oil spill, or oil disaster. we got to stop calling these spills. They're disasters. And so then she really enlightened me about the toxicity of Corexit. So this is July. Um, it was, I, I met with her April, May, June, July. I met with her, I believe it was in August or September of 2010. I have the video. I'll get it to you. Anyways, I was very sick. Um, the, the, the guy who helped me was sick. And then I found out all these workers are sick. About that time, I, I started working with um, the Earth Organization, Louisiana Environmental Action Network. I started really digging in as to what was going on in the Gulf. So what I did immediately was I wrote a letter to Joseph By. I, I took a Metametrics course. Metametrics is the premier lab in environmental toxicity. They were doing testing on these people that were affected. And I have a list of all these people and what we got back initially. 
my work went up to Washington, D.C. with the Earth Organization, with Louisiana Environmental Action Network, with Michael Robichaud. At the time, there was a, a geohazards expert named B.K. Lim, who they've destroyed since. But I learned more about geohazards and corrects it than I really imagined I would ever learn in my life. So then, as this moved forward, I did not see that we were, I did not know that we were going to have all these cancers coming down the pike. I didn't know that we were going to be burying people on a daily basis. But what I did see at the very beginning was neurological impairment. I saw rashes, ghastly rashes, like I've never seen before in my life. Um, those rashes, and I ended up with that rash after being in Orange Beach and Apalachicola, and it itched so bad you wanted to tear your skin off. Um, I, my question to everybody was, why are they not doing any kind of cultures and sensitivities on these rashes? Because anytime I worked in an emergency room, you always did a culture and sensitivity to find out if it was MRSA, if it was, you know, Pseudomonas agarosa, whatever. You always did a culture and a sensitivity so that you knew what, what it would come back as. They were not doing that. Very early on, they should have been doing that. Very early on, they should have been doing neurological assessments on these patients, and they were not. Then I started seeing a pattern of, if I, I can go from head to toe. Number one, hair loss. I saw a lot of that. Number two, um, boils in faces, visual problems, horrible visual problems. I mean, I even started having some visual problems from the wind carrying that corrects it. And, and my eyes were fogged over so I could understand what these people were going through. Then, then I would see facial twitching and drooping of the mouth. Then I heard people complaining that they were having drainage brown drainage. To this day, people still have that. Brown drainage coming out of their ears. Tinnitus, dizziness, um, equilibrium imbalances. Then I started seeing people with thyroid problems. Then people started complaining about respiratory. Oh my God, the respiratory problems. People could not breathe. They couldn't breathe. And, and, and it's bad enough. You can't breathe because of, of an oil disaster, but then you dump corrects it on top of that? Just, I mean, just imagine what that's doing to their airways. Then I was seeing nausea, vomiting. They couldn't be controlled. They could not control the nausea and vomiting. And people were not putting the picture together. Or the government didn't want people to put the picture together. So then you go in, now you've got, now you've got 2-butoxyethanol, which is main biomarker in Corexit 9527. What it did, what it does, and is it, it is a, it's, it's, it's a lock and key mechanism. It opens up the skin, all right? Opens up the pores of the skin, opens up the mucosa in the respiratory tract, sinus problems, my God. The sinus in sinus masses. People were having masses in their sinus in their sinuses. What, what happens? What does that mean? Sorry, Tricia. Exactly. Oh, they were getting um, they were getting like unexplained polyps and masses in their sinus in their sinuses. Unexplained. All of a sudden, all these people are having sinus problems, and and I mean. Just about everybody I talked to, that was the first thing they said: "Is I'm having sinus issues." And uh, but what I, was the concern? What was the? How, how did the thyroid issue get highlighted? Um, people were people were telling me that that they were having thyroid problems. They were having, um, they were they, they either had hypothyroid or hyperthyroid. What people don't understand about surface burning oil slicks. Now remember, they had over four hundred quote, controlled burns of surface burning oil slicks. Those are radioactive. So, so. it's kind of uh, uranium. So you're, you're, you're saying that there's possible, that, I mean, what, that, that uranium or something was, was or some other toxin was uh, getting well, I'm, I spoke to a gentleman who was a physicist and, and he explained to me that 
and I started looking at some labs and I started seeing positives for cesium. You see cesium on a laboratory, you should be freaking out. Is this cesium 134, you mean, or something? Yes, sir. Uh, yep. Is that what do you know if it's 137 or 134? I'm not certain, but I can send you the I can send you the uh I can send you the um the the blood test of yeah, what we I, saw. I presume that cesium-137 would be something from the bond testing of which there's, there's quite a high level in most seas. Right, right, but if you if you look at it at what happens when you burn off oil, and BP has lied about this, the government has lied about this. It is radioactive. Sure, they, it was very deep uh, oil, so that the, uh, I you know. It, I, I, I'm, I've heard rumors that, that it was quite high in uranium content. But it, right. You know, well, you know, and then, then, then you know, I, I was looking at people's abdomens. I was looking at dimpling skin. I was seeing some really strange symptoms that I'd never seen before. Um, I spoke to a physicist who is now deceased, a friend of mine, Ron Cousson, and he said, you know, Tricia, that does sound like, like there could be some radiation problems going on. So, you know, then then when I started seeing some cesium coming up in our laboratories, in the labs, um, then then to me it was pretty clear that there was some radioactivity going on, on in these people. So then, you know, if you go any deeper, look at, I want you to think about, think about what corrects it does to the human body. It opens up the skin it's a, like a lock and key. It opens up the airways. It opens up the sinus mucosa. It eats fat, right? But it also binds to fat. So think about this. It opens all these areas of the human body up. And so it makes it more, it makes the oil more toxic because it's able to be absorbed more quickly through the skin, through the mucous membranes, and then it's lipophilic. So it attaches to fat or to the micelles of the body. So it's lipophilic. Um, I saw a lot of people start bloating up. I mean, bloating. It wasn't fat. It was bloat. I saw a lot of bloating going on up there. Um, I saw um, heart then all of a sudden, if you think about what does, first of all, very simple. The capillaries carry the blood to the heart, the, through the veins, all right? Then, then it goes into the, the heart. Then it goes into the lungs. It's dropped into the lungs. The lungs are constantly competing for chemicals versus oxygen. Chemicals versus oxygen. The chemicals win because that corrects it, allowed that to happen in those lungs. The chemicals win, the chemicals exit the heart into the systemic circulation via the arteries, and then the chemicals in the blood go into the extremities, which means you're all the way down to your feet, all the way through your fingertips. Then it crosses over into the blood-brain barrier, so here you have two and three methyl tempentane, iso octane. You have you have um, horrible, horrible constituents. Benzene, the worst. Benzene and its constituents going into the system. So basically, what I saw was human beings' blood turn to gas. I mean, what what you're really describing there is is blood poisoning. You know, if people get blood poisoning, sort of a a bug gets passed and into the blood system. Uh, you get all the headaches, the visual. <clears throat> there's, a, there's a lot. Exactly. Of, so, so, so we are talking at least we could say with all those symptoms, from what I, I can see, uh, um, aside from possibly rashes and more the skin complaints, is that uh, is that we're really talking about uh, a, a sort of a blood poisoning that just just hits the whole all your major organs basically absolutely in an immune system you're going to have a bacteriological nightmare sure because sure. Trying to pop something. right the immune system is completely completely bottomed out um you know this is happening to a population of people that they did not think would say anything because they're poor and they're broke 
or, or they'd broken them, basically. Well, it might be worth pointing out to our viewers that we did cover in, uh, in our first program with War and Dauphiny, we were looking at uh, how the local communities uh, around the world, not just in, in the Gulf area, in Fukushima, in Ireland, uh, wherever there's a disaster or there's a, a PR sort of uh, problems for oil companies, uh, we see these same uh, strategies being employed against local communities. Uh, large slush funds full of cash. Uh, in the Irish case, it was two million uh, euros uh, slush fund for cash, which they could uh, use to just buy things as they went along. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just wanted to, to, to bring that in there. So that, that this is just to give a bit of background context of what you're saying. Well, so what makes sense to me about all of this is because I did look at the initial work. I did see the initial um, VOCs and PAHs. That stuff went to D.C. It went, went up to D.C. My letter to Biden went to D.C. His pass off to the CDC went to D.C. My question I was asking is, are you not looking at these illnesses because you don't understand environmental toxicity or how to read an environmental lab because I learned it well at Metametrics. Right. And, 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 and Metametrics was a laboratory that you uh, hooked up with at quite an early point, wasn't it? At the very beginning, absolutely. Yeah. And the yeah. thing is that now Metametrics has been, abs I, I think Metametrics got a lot of heat. And Metametrics has, has joined forces with Genova Lab. And so now what I'm, what I'm, where, where I'm at right now is, is sending all this, all this, all my observations and all the observations of Dr. Michael Robichaud, um, of Lean, of, um, of everything that Charles has done to Genova to see if we can find a test now for because, you know, after a period of time, those light chemicals um, will be absorbed and they won't show up on a lab test. So what I want to do is find a lab test or whatever criteria through Genova Labs, I'm going to go to them and see if they can help me find a, you know, just even a few lab tests that we can use. Well, there was, I don't know if this is relevant, but there was a DNA test in uh, Japan. And the mm -hmm. university was, uh, I think it was two years or probably even earlier than that, uh, into the disaster. And they said that they could do a test, a blood test, and they could tell if people's blood has been affected by radiation, uh, by the right. radiation that they were uh, uh, sort of, uh, possibly uh, put to. Uh, but we're, now, looking, we're looking at so many different chemical constituents sure. that, that, you know, being able to isolate it on a DNA test, I'm not certain but I'm not a geneticist, so... Sure, I, I do you know, know that, that they did that, but then on the other hand, the Japanese government stepped in and said, well, we can't do DNA tests because uh, some women, might, you know, some families might find out that there's illegitimate children and things, you know. Right, um, right. But the reality is, is that if they've done the DNA test, and this is, this is the point I'm trying to make, if they've done the DNA test in time on the people of Fukushima, which is just a mm -hmm. quick blood test, uh, then basically, when they put a claim in labor, if they ever got cancers or thyroid cancers or problems, they could say, well, look, this, my blood was, was uh, definitely affected by the radiation. Uh, so basically, uh, the, the argument that the Prime Minister of uh, Japan made against it was, was the fact that this illegitimacy, and he had to have a discussion about it. And he said that two and a half years later, so that this is like after the accident, he's only got six months, and then after three years, the, uh, that particular genetic test becomes uh, uh, not so viable, if you see what I mean. Correct. But, uh, but, but, the, but I'm just saying the genetics field do, are able to tell certain things up to a certain point. I don't know if five years is too long, uh, but, um, but anyway, that was just my thought, and it, I just thought I'd like to tie in the Japanese cover yeah. up a very similar situation. Yeah, it is actually. You know, it's 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 like the great poisoning has been going on, sure. and and it's not just in the Gulf. You know, it's all over. We're seeing things going on, on all over the world. The the very most interesting thing that has come out of this, and I've got to say, you know, Dr. Michael Robichaud is my hero. Um, if it wasn't for Dr. Robichaud putting these pieces together, he put it all together and he figured something out about all this. 
it is these symptom, the symptomatology and the symptomatology that I'm seeing in a lot of people, especially the neurological issues, are directly a direct correlation to first Gulf War syndrome. All right, think about what did they give, what did they, what they gave a neostigmide to the soldiers of the first Gulf War. They also dumped tons and tons of pesticides on them. And, and, you know, and, and there was, there was an outpouring of some really pretty bad diseases that came out of first Gulf War syndrome. Of course, the oil rigs were all on fire, weren't they? Absolutely. But, you know, when he put it together, it wasn't so much about the Kuwaiti oil fields. It was more about the, 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 the medications that they gave those soldiers and then all of the chemicals that they poured on top of him, of them. And, and all of the, all of the, you know, I, I mean, take it all the way back to Vietnam and the defoliants in Agent Orange. You know, I mean, the bottom line is he, he found a parallel to first Gulf War. The thing that is so interesting to me about these people is that they are so chemically toxic that I was at a meeting in Coden, Alabama, and I was getting bit up by, we have these little bugs, we call them noceums, but they're like, we call them teeth with wings. Hmm. And when they bite you, it's worse than a mosquito bite. So we were all getting bit, and I ran for the Windex because it's got ammonia in it. <laughs> and I went, to put the, I went to put the ammonia on my skin, and a couple other people did, and everybody in the room ran out because they were all so chemically toxic, they couldn't handle the smell of the ammonia. Uh -huh. So they can't even, half of them can't even walk through a detergent aisle without getting sick. Many of them can't even cook without getting sick. Or not like sensitivity, sort of kind of a sensitivity is built up or something. Awful chemical sensitivity. Um, I've inter when I I've interviewed people um, who who just they cannot tolerate chemicals of any form in their environment at all, and I, we can't put them in a bubble. So you, you know what are we going to do? Um, my thinking is well maybe we could maybe we can ionize their home or do something. I don't know. But we, we need to do something with these people. And it's not, they're not crazy. And that's really what I am so angry right now. Because at the very beginning, I was on the phone with the NIH. And they told me that they were going to go, make, first of all, make phone calls to the community. Secondly, they were going to do a study on these communities. And they went in and they, they did everything but what they were supposed to do. They should have done hair analysis. They did not. I mean, you could find heavy metals in hair analysis. You can find a lot through hair analysis. Um, they went in. They took samples of carpet. They were they were trying to prove basically. They weren't trying to prove really what was going on. They were trying to prove that it was in their everyday chemicals. I had a guy, you know, who had Corexit dumped in his pool. Bottom line, he was right up the road from me where they said in Florida where they said that they didn't spray inland, which is a lie. Um, and they didn't spray after what, 2010? Well, they were spraying well into 2011, 2012. And then they were subseeing this stuff. So I had a guy who had a pool in Homestassa right up the road from me. They told the story on that Florida oil spill law. Nobody followed up. I followed up. Bob Naiman analyzed their pool water and it was 59.3 parts per million of 2-butoxyethanol, which is the biomarker for Corexit 9527. And when I followed up with those people a year ago, they were still sick. So they had spent $80,000 of their own money to see a doctor. They had never gotten any compensation from BP. Well, welcome to the Gulf of Mexico and millions of people. Very early on, Ira Leffer, brilliant brilliant doctor and, and, and a NASA scientist out of UCSB. Ira Leffer predicted it would be picked up in the atmospheric conditions. NASA scientist, professor, and technical flow rate man at UCSB, brilliant professor, said it would be picked up atmospherically and it would be carried in within 20 miles of the Gulf in the rain. Or it could be carried anywhere atmospherically. Sure enough, sure enough, doesn't it rain oil 
in Cedar Key, Florida. Oh wow! I mean, I mean, the thing is that obviously you could see the oil um, in terms yeah. of radiation pollution, which I've covered. Uh, you've got something called sea to land transfer, uh, sure, which is uh, particles being knocked up and droplets being knocked up into the air um, as the uh, as as the you know sort of the surf comes in. And the, right. Where waves break and what have you. The ocean course, spray. Yeah, it's, it's like a very far, fine mist spray. Mm -hmm. It's why cars rust near the coast, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, bo bottom line is, all right, okay, so we've covered the health effects, so, mm -hmm. and we've covered the early health effects. Mm -hmm. Can we come to some of the later ones? I, 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 having read Charles Williams' uh, stuff, yes. I'm aware that there's cancers and all sorts. So maybe you could uh, give us a, yeah. a kind when of... I was a, in to what's going on there. I made the decision um, at, after I had, had left and I was, I, was, I was in the rig, I got a phone call from a one, woman named Lori Bersarge. She's an amazing human being and she has, she has been sick herself and she has fought for a small town in, in it's called Coden in, and, and you know, these people have to teach me Southern. So it's, it's pronounced Coden and another town called Bayou La Battery. Charles did a story, Charles Dix did a story on um, six fishermen, and the last of them was Jack Hill that passed away um, from lung cancer. When I went into Codin and Bayou La Battery, um, people talked. I started throwing out, you know, 15 key points. Have you or anybody that you know, blah, 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 blah. Have you experienced this symptom? Are you experiencing these symptoms? Do you have sinus, blah, blah, blah. It came out of that story that a woman in Bayou La Battery spoke up. Her husband had never been sick, and he just passed away of multiple myeloma. So you're going to see a lot of blood-borne cancers. It makes sense. You're going to see liver failure, kidney failure, because the liver, what does the liver do? It processes alcohol, toxins. What, you know, what is the kidney? It's your filtration system for your urine. You're going to see soft tissue cancers. I mean, I don't have a doubt about that. And, you know, the thing is that, that, you know, multiple myelomas, blood-borne cancers. I have a woman that's reporting to me that has Hodgkin's lymphoma. That is a known cancer attributed to benzene. Benzene is one of the hydrocarbon chains, and it's one of the nastier chains of hydrocarbons. So, you know, this, this is no surprise to me, and I really don't understand why it's not a surprise to everybody else, and it, including our freaking government. You know, this is awful, and these people are suffering, and you're going to see, it's five years, man, we're headed into six. And, You're going and, to... Can we just, 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 just stick with the Jack Hill story for a moment? Yes. Uh, he was a gentleman who, who got cancer, and he had mm -hmm. to make a decision about his home or whether he was going to go treatment. And did right. He, did he decide not to, to take the treatment and just accept his fate? And I, believe he, I believe that's what happened. I spoke to Charles about that. Um, I don't, I don't, we don't know where he went sure. because we found out that uh, – I found out that he was – he had asked to leave his body to Wilma Subra for autopsy. But when he died, nobody really knows where he died. And so I don't, I don't, and, and Dr. Subra, and that's another thing. You know, there were, there are a lot of people that have left their bodies to be autopsied and then it comes time to autopsy the body and they can't find the bodies. I've heard that from people firsthand. Wow. So, mm -hmm. so I mean, what you're saying that uh, is that is that like people whose whose loved ones have, uh, have disappeared, or is it kind of secondhand information, that testimony? Secondhand from loved ones, yeah. Oh right, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I don't get it. I just six people are dead, just that were sprayed on the roll to roll tide. Six, more are dying. You know, as I was leaving Bayou La Battery. Um, I stopped in to a um, firehouse in Bayula Battery, and and the guy who 
who ran the firehouse at Bayula Battery had kidney cancer. He was going in for surgery. Both kidneys were affected. We didn't know. He didn't know which one was worse. They were going to try and save one of the kidneys. This gentleman told me that he has never been sick until after the Gulf oil spill. Um, I've got people that work the Vessels of Opportunity program that are sick, and nobody is listening to these people. Nobody's putting this picture together, and but I'm putting it together, and I Lean's putting it together. You're putting it together. Charles Diggs is putting it together. Uh, Real Coastal Warriors is putting it together. Many of the people, Kendra Arneson in, 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 in Louisiana. I did a story on her when I was up in Louisiana. Kendra is going to a funeral a week in Louisiana. A funeral a week. And that story, if anybody wants to read any of my stories, thank God for Real Coastal Warriors, and I'm going to tell you why. Because, you know, a lot of our own in the Gulf, they're not all, not a lot, but there were numerous people in the Gulf that we thought were on our side, our own, that turned on us. And I'm not going to name names now, but someday I'm going to be able to name those names on who turned on me, who turned on their fellow brother and sister, and who tried to destroy a movement that we had really moving quickly. But we had to wait five years for all this information to come in. Had it not been for Real Coastal Warriors, for Maureen um, and, and the people at Real Coastal Warriors, they gave me a forum called Medical Moments. If you want to read some of the stories that I've done, I probably got 200 more to write. But because each one of these takes me, you know, if, I, if I've got their charts, it takes me about 40 hours of my own time to write these stories. So, so I can go through the chart and go all the way back. I have one woman that was washing windows in Pensacola. She, she worked at a restaurant, or Panama City, I'm sorry. And she worked in a restaurant. She took her children to work with her. And she got sprayed on. She was out there in the middle of that. She moved up to uh, Wisconsin. I have the story on her. Her name's Sabrina. And, it, and, and she moved up to Wisconsin, and she thought she had a doctor up there. What happened was the doctor tested them, and, and, and they came back positive for hippocuric acid. That's a byproduct of toluene. Toluene is another chemical that's in high, that's in the hydrocarbon mix. So she came up positive for toluene. Or actually, it came up positive for hippocuric acid. Then the next thing you know, she's got the police saying, and the doctor called called HRS or Health and Resources in the in her community and said that she allowed her children to huff paint. They're still sick. And, and they got positive. And so this woman was, was supposedly, and this is a good mother. She wouldn't let her kids huff paint. Yeah. And, and, and so this is, this is what they're saying about these people. They're crazy. They're drug dealers. They're drug seekers. They're huffing paint. They're all doing drugs. They're all a bunch of alcoholics. And they're mentally ill. Right. And they drink as well. Oh, and they drink yeah, like fish, yeah. Okay, well, um, I was going to come on to the mental illness thing, uh, but I, I think it's a good point here just to just very quickly just insert uh, the fact that, that there is a documentary being done on this. Uh, you've yes. been working closely with the, uh, the person who's, who's basically been doing this documentary and putting it together. It sounds like it's starting to, the, coming to the end of the production, I presume? Um, I don't know. I'm, I, uh, I'm, I had the honor, a great number of us, numerous people, they have followed. Mark Manning has followed the people of the Gulf for over five and a half years. And, and the film, he is, he's, he's going to be doing some more filming. Um, I'm not really certain when the end date's going to be for it, but I know that he's doing a crowdfund. Um, I've had a lot of people that wanted to donate to what I'm doing because I'm just going from community to community to community to community. And I'm getting the message out that you need to take your power back. Right. And, and that's what I do and educate them that they, they need to take their power back 
and, and they need to start writing down because we're all, all of us, are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. So many people don't even remember what went down five and a half years ago. But once you start journaling and you start writing down these memories, then you begin to remember what went on and what went down and what you saw. So then I'll go back 60 days later and I'll pick up their notebooks. And then I can start putting their stories together on paper. That's what I'm doing. And, and I think that if, I, if somebody doesn't historically write on these people and write their cases, then, then you know, what are we going to have a, four years from now when everybody's dropping dead? We need their stories. And we need a good documentary to out this, you know? And, and I think, you know, you know, the thing is, there are there's some good documentaries out there. Number one, um, there is, there's one that people need to see, and it's called The Great Invisible, because that's exactly how we're being treated, invisible. Um, there's another documentary that came out very early on about the history of BP. And people need to see that. It was called um, The Big Fix. Um, there are other movies that are, that are coming out, but this one is going to address the health issues, which is so important. You know, it really is. And uh, if, if you haven't seen any of Mark's work, he, he directed and wrote The Road to Fallujah. Dar Jamal has been a hero in all of this. Dar Jamal was originally with Al Jazeera, and he's now with Truth Out. And Dar Jamal did a lot of stories. Now Charles Diggs has stepped in with stories. So the thing is, the more stories that we get out and the more press that we get, and the more we hold BP accountable for the future of our golf and the health of these people, then, then I believe that there's got to be some justice in all this. Otherwise, I wouldn't be involved in it. Amazing. Um, right, okay. And I, I, I think what we'll, we'll do now is come to the mental health issues. Now, um, it's a bit of a bugbear for me because in the radiation sort of science field, mm -hmm. we have the hormesis theory where a little bit of harm will do you good. Um, mm -hmm. Now, it's been, it's been debunked on so many levels and even sort of pro-nuclear guys are kind of a bit doubtful on it. So, well, rumor, rumor has it, Sean, Yeah, and it comes from some very valid sources, that they are opening up clinics along the Gulf. Rumor has it, and it's from some very qualified people, that, um, that they are not treating for chemical illness. That that happened four or five years ago. Now, they're supposed to be putting in $110 million into clinics, and they're not treating for chemical illness. They're treating them, oh, well, well let's, we're going to treat for, you know, diabetes. We're going to look at diabetes. Well, diabetes has been around the Gulf forever. You know, I mean, it's been around the United States forever. Um, they're not looking at chemical toxicity. Um, rumor has it that when you go into a clinic and you say you're chemically toxic, that they'll give you a referral out, but it's to an eye, ear, nose, and throat doctor for pollen problems, or it's to an eye, ear, nose, and throat doctor that doesn't even exist, or a clinic or a doctor that hasn't seen patients in years or is retired or dead. Now, that's wrong. So, so basically, there's a range of people you'll be sent to. The best will be in the ear, nose, and throat, where you'll be checked for allergies and what have you. Yeah. Right. They got the, the the rumor has it that it's they're they're having a horrible pollen issue this time of year. So, and what we're still seeing is that they're they're still not uh, not even taking into account anything to do with toxicity. Absolutely not. Okay, but we're going to come back to this point in a in another interview, I think. Um, but uh, what we could cover in this particular one, I think if we go to the mental health issue, we, we had a little talk about it earlier, and I just thought it was a, uh, you might explain, first off, what, what, how are they 
so how is the mental health issue being used by the PR companies? Hold on, I'll explain. Let me let me I'll explain this to you. Give me just one second here so I can pull up that link. When I read this, I wanted to throw up. So, I So obviously when while you're doing that, I'll I'll just give people a bit of background on this. Now, what we've discovered is the fact that you have a whole range of uh, disasters or whatever's going on, whether it's um, the semi palantis people who are living under the nuclear bombs in Kazakhstan or wherever, that they will bring in, uh, or you know, the pro nuclear people or the chemical, the big corporations will bring in the argument that uh, that it's cigarettes, it's tobacco, and we've heard that from Trisha already. And then there's one other key area where they can pull in, and, and they say, well, look, you, you have a fear. Of this situation, uh, and right. and that's down to you being uh, mentally ill, and 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 then basically it totally takes any power out. The, the press use this quite a lot that people have a fear of radiation, and you're worried, you know, and and the whole thing is basically turned around on its head to where if somebody is being chemically poisoned or whatever, that uh, that that if they say that you're just worried about it when you go to them with symptoms, uh, as pe as the mothers in Fukushima did, and they just say, "Oh no, you don't worry. You know, it's just uh, rumours, and uh, no, you're okay. It's probably some sort of cold." And uh, the cold was the excuse given because there was a lot of uh, respiratory illnesses, and nosebleeds, and things of this sort. So, all right. Well, com coming back to to what was going on in the Gulf. Um, I was quite uh, surprised to hear they were using this uh, quite extensively. Now, uh, could, could you, uh, could, could you, are you ready, uh, Trish? With your yeah, I can tell you. Um, I, I sent, I sent you this link on, on your, on a private message. Oh. Um, in particular, the bulk of the resources. Now, check this out. First of all, they're saying that we're resilient. Are you kidding me? Really? We have just suffered the worst maritime disaster in the history of the United States of America. And, and, and then right before that, what did they go through? Katrina? Then before that, what else did they go through? You know, they weathered Katrina. And they thought, oh, thank God it's all good. Then they're losing all this land mass. And they're, they're, we're resilient. We're not resilient. Not anymore. But anyways, the primary care project, primary care capacity project, is 50 million. All right? That's primary care. That doesn't even include chemical toxicity. The mental health and behavioral health project is 36 million. The community health workers training is 4 million. The environmental health capacity and literacy project is 15 million. Whoa. Yeah. So, 50 60, 70, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 105 million to the co from the coast given to the Coastal Resource and Resiliency Center. That right there is a big oxymoron. It's a huge oxymoron. First of all, we're not resilient. People are dying. And the training pro project the training program, I looked at that, it's a joke. They are not going to be teach chronic disease management is what they're looking at. Diabetes, asthma, they're not looking at chemical toxicity. That's mad. I mean, we, we, you're not the only person to have said this. It's just, it's, it's uh, astounding. So, I mean, when when people are going in with fear of this, uh, of, of maybe that their illness is, uh, what are the doctors doing? Um, are they, they they're handing over the Prozac, or, or what, what's the deal? Oh, absolutely. You know, m most doctors do not know how to treat chemical toxicity, and so, so do you have statistics on on mental health uh, referrals and what have you now uh, and uh, treatment? No, but I'm sure somebody does if they're going to give all that money to uh, mental health. I can tell you from my personal, from what I've I've experienced. Um, most of the people I talk to. You know what? First of all, depression is secondary. It's all secondary to being poisoned. 
and and all that is is actually tertiary to being poisoned you know treat the poisoning first and detox these people and you know i mean dr robishop proved it very well and he had he had a great detox program and it helped a lot of people unfortunately we had to put them right back into a situation where they were getting retoxic just from living there because you know as it gets warmer you're going to see this stuff continue to rise with every storm it's going to come back on the beaches scott porter talked about that you're going to see more of it coming up and it's going to get more toxic and people are going to get sicker and god forbid if we have a hurricane it's going to be on everybody's lawn in the whole south so the bottom line is that if you're not doing anything to cut down on the pollution, I'm not seeing that happen. If they're not doing anything to cut down on the air quality, which they're not even studying the air quality at the right time of day. You know, they should have air monitoring going on at all times. Um, thirdly, they're not doing anything. They're, they're just going to do more drilling. And and it's sad. I'm, I keep watching this go on. And when this money's gone... That's this now this is adding up to 105 million all right it's supposed to be 110 who got the 5 million to put this together is my question and and the bottom line is this is a research initiative we don't need any more research we need treatment well i think i think that's uh, nearly a good way of leaving it but what i would say first is like jimmy wow you know have you got anything to say? Have you got any questions or um, what's your perception of what's happening? Well, I wanted to ask you, Trisha, about the, um, when, when the blowout occurred first and uh, mm -hmm. there was a lot of stories going around now. This I'm going to sort of bring us a bit into the conspiracy side of it, like, but there were reports of a bacteria that was unknown of at the time, which was uh, genetically modified and which was uh, down on down in the Gulf area and it was being used to uh, treat or to eat uh, the excess oil but at the same oh, yeah. time we were hearing reports then that there were other forms of bacteria being created by these bacteria and there were then again also more reports of a flesh-eating bacteria that was attacking people's skin along the coast have you uh, have you yes I, I I can definitely talk to you about that I want you to think first of all um, the bacteria thing First of all, we did prove, um, when Charles was in Russia, I contacted him because there were trolls that were hiding the fact of a genetically modified Borkmanis was the name of the bacteria. Okay? There was a prediction at the very beginning that the Gulf oil spill would create a bacteriological problem. And it is, and I'll tell you why. First of all, Vibrio is a naturally occurring bacteria, and oftentimes it will eat oil. It's, it, it assists in oil degradation. Um, there are other bacteria that are that like Pseudomonas that will eat oil. You know, there are certain bacteria that will eat oil. What I did find out when Charles was in Norway, I had him contact a Russian group, and and I'll. He'll, we'll get that, we'll be getting that story out shortly. But he did contact that Russian group and I asked him about if he, if, if this group knew anything about Borkmanis, which, which they said was a genetically modified bacteria that was put into our water. Um, he called and he found out well, they didn't know anything about that Borkmanis, but sure enough, the United States allowed uh, a, an ecological group, a good group out of Russia, to bring their boom in, which was saturated with Pseudomonas, and a deadly form of Pseudomonas agarosa. And so what they did was, you know, they said, yeah, we, we brought a, a whole load of Pseudomonas agarosa saturated boom. Pseudomonas agarosa is only good in very cold climates, not in the Gulf. But BP and the EPA, and they were surprised. 
you know, the woman, the woman at this in Russia was very surprised that that they would have even allowed them to put that in this water without EPA and BP studies. You know, was it a big conspiracy? Well, you know, Terry Hazen had some oil spill eating microbes, but I don't, I'm not going to give him that much credit. You know, Terry Hazen is evil, and I'd like to see him go down. But the bottom line is, it wasn't, nobody can show me that the J. Craig Vintner stuff, but from synthetic genomics, was the predominant microbe, and I'm not going to give Vintner that much credit. Bottom line, there were a bunch of, 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 of microbes that were introduced into our water. And I, and I have a theory that anybody that had one was allowed to throw it in that gulf because nobody was watching them. Nobody even wanted the testing on those microbes. So here you go. You've got, now you've got oil. You've got Corexit. You've got now microbes are growing at an exponential rate. What are microbes going to do when there is a presence of over 50 million gallons of oil, which I believe is more than what they're saying, sitting down at the bottom by University of Auburn on Vibrio in Tarles? So we've got, we've, we've had 47 cases and 13 deaths of Vibrio right here in the Gulf in Florida. And I still can't get them to understand that maybe we got a little problem. Uh, we just lost you there for a little second. I lost the two of you guys just during that, like, but I think we got most of it, uh, Tricia. I, I think you were just okay. finishing off. You were saying something about that you had 40, uh, well, actually. 47, 47 reported cases. Reported. Now, this is very underreported as far as I'm concerned. And then we had 13 deaths just in Florida this summer. And, from and uh, what are the statistics prior to, to this year? Uh, they said that they had never seen anything quite that high in Florida since 2010. So we're talking about a, 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 a range of different microbes, and um, we're talking yes. about um, the Macondo well, which is possibly still spewing oil. And right. are you saying then that we're going to get... Uh, see an exponential growth of these bacteria as they as they continue to feed on on the oil yes we will Honestly. and the microbes did not eat the oil Samantha Joy just proved that God. so what They're are, just what are they feeding on huh what are they feeding on I think they're just basically they're feeding on people and animals you know they're feeding on on the, on the Gulf Flesh eating bacteria is nothing to laugh at. And and that the press in Florida has downplayed that like you wouldn't believe. The other thing is, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give BP a little credit here. All right. All right. First of all, we have a real issue with runoff from you know, the only thing this state tests for is fecal form bacteria. We've proved that. Um, they test for fecal form bacteria. The only Thing that just about any state tests for is fecal form bacteria because they can't think out of a box half of them so anyways uh, we had we had we had runoff from sugarcane fields you know and then then everybody uses the Gulf as their toilet basically they dump their all their crap in the in the Gulf and and so bottom line is we've had a runoff of fecal form bacteria from Cluiston, from the sugarcane fields. Um, now that interacted, it had to have interacted with that oil. And it had to have interacted with, with the, um, with, with the Gulf. And the bacteria, you know? I suppose, it would have been a, a good uh, source of uh, food. Absolutely. And of Absolutely. course you've got nitrogen then feeding the fecal form bacteria, uh, which... Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my God, you this know, is a scary the, sounding cocktail that that's brewing there. It's frightening. It's absolutely frightening. And I don't understand why people can't get the big picture here. That golf is not safe. And, you know, and then we got people, you know. I mean, and if you look, if you look at the warning signs, you look at the warning signs. I mean, I have a, a P. 
Pete did a Pete and I did a piece on it, and I'll get that over to you. The warning signs on the beaches are an eight by ten piece of paper. You can't even see it. Kids couldn't see it, but but everything else is in giant block letters. No vehicles on the beach, but nothing about that flesh eating bacteria. Oh, you'll have to, you you'll have to get us, you'll have to get us a picture of that so that we can compare. <laughs> oh, I'd be glad to. I've got that, and I also have a New York Times article. It's an excellent article, and it was in the New York Times in 2010. And it talked about, will a bacterial plague follow the BP oil disaster? Oh, really? Oh. It was very predictory. Right, and that was New York Times. Do you know who the author was? Yes, it was. Hold on just a minute. Let me find it for you. I can excellent. Google it right now. Jimmy, what are, you, what are you making of all this, then? Um, it's just, well... We've known stuff, some of it, we've always thought, like, was it some of it too conspiratorial to, to be believable? Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really scary, actually. I, I, my heart goes out to the people down there in the South. You know, we always knew it was going to be bad and it was going to be going on for years, but it, this is potentially worse than we could have imagined, really. Absolutely. Um, and we're obviously seeing the fact that once, like all the other disasters, that the money is being poured off into weird research, uh, checking people's carpets as opposed to checking water samples and soil samples. Um, and it's just, yeah, we're just seeing it's, that the whole thing's just been, been uh, manipulated, the whole situation. And Absolutely. Fact, there's no research. It's you know, very and hard to know what, what's causing the bacteria. And if there was research, you could definitively prove it. Um, right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to post this link right over to you guys right now on uh on the skype page hold on just a minute let me get in there yeah this link will go out with the show and uh yeah um also put if, that if, up if, to european news weekly dot wordpress dot com and uh and of course that'll be uh shared around as well on various other platforms yeah this was this when i read this you know when i read this and i read this in 2010 when i read this it just it, it turned on a light, and so I've been watching for it ever since. Sure. You know, I've been looking for this ever since, and it's happening. Well, I mean, this article was very predicting of what was going to happen here. And, you know, thank God Samantha Joy just came out with the fact that the microbes didn't eat the oil, but those microbes are going to be eating the people. Sure. And we and see the New animals. York Times is, was covering <laughs> Edward Snowden, for instance. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and of course they're not covering quite so so lovingly now. Um, right. Uh, what's what's the story as far as the New York Times and covering the uh, updates on what's happening in the Gulf? I'm not hearing anything from them. Nothing at all. No. All right. So no. It's not Paul Vusen of uh, Greenwire who who uh, posted that up. Yeah, I like I really like Greenwire. Yeah. Um, Paul's good. Um, actually, the other people, you know. We've got, historically, people need to read Darj Mal's article. People sure. need to read Charles's articles. Sure. People need to go back and read Real Coastal Warriors because we have screenshots of everything. You know, we've followed this for so long. Um, people need to read Louisiana Environmental Action Network's newsletter. They'll tell you what's going on. They're really, really good about that. You know, my thought is we all need to work together. Absolutely. Because... Because if we don't, this is not going to go away. And, and the Earth Organization has done some great studies. Um, you know, Scott Porter is dynamite. He is right on. And, and so, you know, I'm just, all I want to do is I want to get the truth out about these people. I want to get clinics and I want to see them get treated. Um, oh, if I fair. if I could very pull fair. if I could pull you back to the um to the cesium one thirty four just for a yes, moment sir. again, and um, I p we posed this question to Scott also when we had him on last week uh, or the week before was I can't remember but um, what about have you any knowledge of anybody who's actually got to test uh, some of the oil that was coming out of the condo well for radioactivity because it was also another yes. one of those conspiratorial stories which may or may not right. have been at the time of the blowout. Yeah, I have some of the original tests 
that were done that showed cesium coming up in the blood of two people, I believe. Okay, so I mean, basically, we'll have to have a, have a wee look at that because that's uh, yeah. That's, I will uh, send you. I will send you that whole thread. I'm, we're going to have you back anyway because obviously you're up to some mischief. Well, um, no, I'm always up to mischief. <laughs> these activists, I don't, I don't know where we get them from. Uh, we're trouble. I'm I'm trouble, and and you know, I'm really not. And just <laughs> you know, I all I'm trying to do is just all I want is justice. That's it. Absolutely. I'm not. You know, I just, I'm, I might be a little smart, but there's a lot of people out there that are very, very smart that, that get it. And, but not enough people are getting the whole picture. Okay. And I just want to say, because we've been talking quite a bit, and I just want to sort of summarize what we've been talking about by saying, in my opinion, this is my opinion of your situation, is that you've, uh, you know, you've uh, uh, basically turned around, you've given up what was nice and comfortable and uh, you've basically uh, taken sort of a, a, a life that will allow you to do your activism and mm -hmm. uh, I, I, all I can say is I, I very much admire that uh, because it does prove a certain uh, commitment to, to what you're doing and, uh, and of course you have the skills and another thing you've done is uh, you've documented in many ways in either in testimony, uh, by photograph. Uh, oh, by the way, you, you have photographs uh, of vet, of of, um, of uh, a lot of skin rashes. And yeah, you, if you, if you go to um, Real Coastal Warriors Medical Moments, you'll see you'll see photographs. Everything that I've done on every story I've done. Well, that Many on Facebook of those. Or on the web page. It's on Facebook on their page. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, so you. It's go called to Medical pictures, Moments. And it's Medical Moments folder. And, Pictures. And I also found the ICD-9 coding, which is the, the it's in the United States, you, whenever you treat somebody, you have to have a code to treat them with. And that's how you bill. And it's a Medicare code. And it's a, I'm, I'm waiting for the brand new, they're called ICD-10s, but the ICD-9s are working fine. And, and actually, I have gotten some people, some doctors, by providing them with those codes. Okay, so you're doing some real hands-on sort of uh, uh, medical supportive work as well. Right. One gentleman, uh, one gentleman, the doctor, that the doc that he went to, the doctor saw him and and he said that um, he said that this reminded him of first Gulf War. So this is something that has been a theme, and so we're starting to get some doctors to see these people because we do have the Medicare codes. And I'll be looking for the new codes for them. Sure, that's that, that's great, and and uh, we will definitely be bringing bringing you back to update us on on how this is all developing. Uh, Thank you. And uh, I thought that just uh, anybody who hasn't been following the whole series, Scott Porter, uh, when we're talking about flesh eating uh, bacteria living off oil, uh, not only is there a huge amount of it left after the BP Gulf oil disaster. But we also have another well, uh, which uh, Scott is uh, trying to get uh, information on, um, and uh, that's being delayed by the look of it. Uh, but he's uh, he's been uh, he won a court case. The information is supposed to be released, uh, but they haven't released the information yet. Um, Scott's an amazing human being. Yeah, no, he's 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 really on it, and he's he's sort of making us aware that you know of the thousands of wells and uh, thousands more capped wells. Uh, that basically uh, there, there is sort of oil always being released into the uh, into the uh, sort of environment. And my pet uh, wish, and I'm just putting this out there for anybody who has any information on it, is I'm looking into the Atlantic eel. Uh, why in 2013 was it uh, put under the extinction uh, report? And I, I'm just sort of saying that that was put under extinction uh, warning watch uh, by Europe. Um, so uh, we've heard nothing about that particular species in America, but mm -hmm. uh, the Atlantic eel goes from the Gulf of uh, Mexico, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, up to Europe, and then back to the Gulf and up to Europe. So um, when we're looking at what the, all the problems there were, as we were saying, from nitrogen to bacteria to flesh-eating viruses to oil and all the other stuff that's going on, uh, wh why isn't Europe saying, you know? Can't you clean this up, please? Uh, because it's affecting our fisheries. Well, do you remember? I don't know if you guys remember the cold, the brutal cold that you guys had up there. Loop current stalled 
I believe it was on August 10th, 2010. Stalled for a while. Correct, yeah. But I don't... Do you remember how cold it was up there? Oh. Uh, and that's... Yeah. yeah. We, we did have a... Yeah. Yeah. That was because you guys didn't have a loop current up there. Yeah, no. It's a... Uh, it's, it's, uh, well, I, I have to say I was definitely keeping an eye on the currents and things for mm -hmm. a number of reasons, but... Uh, but yeah, there's there's definitely some sort of little uh, yeah. contusions to the, the. There definitely <laughs> the was. There was also a break too in the jet stream, and and if if I'm correct, also mm -hmm. there's some connection as well between the jet stream and the, and and and, and the sea currents also. So, um, sure. yeah. And we've got obviously global warming going on. We've got mm -hmm. uh, the Antarctic. Uh, it looks like we might be locked into, you know, possibly three to five meters of uh, sea level rise from what's been, what's just cracking apart at the moment down there. Um, that's a, that was probably a worst case scenario. Um, it's just a report I've had recently from someone who is highly regarded and works in Antarctic. So uh, hopefully he's wrong, uh, but uh, yeah. that would certainly uh, put a, a, make a big issue in your, in Louisiana and that part of the world. I think, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. It would put everybody underwater. <laughs> yeah, 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 Florida also <laughs> would be in it. But um, I want to yeah. read, you, you brought up such an important point there. It was uh, bringing this into a kind of a, a sovereignty type finish. Um, you were talking about taking notes. And um, I can't stress enough as well, too, the importance of taking notes and writing things down as soon as they happen because they're mm -hmm. called contemporaneous notes. And if things ever went into a court of law, for example, like that, uh, contemporaneous notes are one of the highest forms of evidence that one can introduce, uh, because they're, you're not like remembering stuff that may have happened and you may remember incorrectly when it's written down. It's it, it it's 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 the strongest form of evidence you can introduce. That, that's why I hand everybody a notebook. Excellent. Excellent. You know, write it down. Remember, because if you don't. Then, then I'm not able to tell the full story, and 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 I'll help you. I can't I can't hold everybody's hand in the golf, but I most certainly can empower them. Wow, this is a really good place to stop it because we've been doing uh, a lot of stuff on solution based news, uh, and I think we had a, a lovely little solution there to how sometimes we can overcome disasters and uh, cover ups by corporations by individuals making contemporary notes. Excellent point, Jimmy. And uh, it's great, Tricia, that you're, you're um, you know, promoting that uh, with, your, uh, with your work. So, right. Um, thank thank you, you for having me. So uh, welcome, Tricia. Yeah. So welcome. It was great, it's great to have you. God and, bless uh, you. You will come back again uh, for an Absolutely. update. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think we were going to have a little talk on one or two other topics, just activist -y type of thing. Uh, can you give for a, a little discussion on, on activism generally, maybe? Would you like that? Yes, I would like that. Thank you. Excellent. So uh, we're, we're kind of into supporting bloggers and activists and explaining yes. to people how it all fits together. Um, all right. So um, thank you, Tricia, Jimmy, thank you. And uh, thank you to all those that get to listen to this. Uh, we're going to document this up. We're going to put it onto europeannewsweekly.wordpress.com. Uh, and share it around on their various other platforms as well. Uh, my Facebook page is Sean Arclight, A-R-C-L-I-G-H-T. Uh, Trisha Springstead can be found on Facebook, and her uh, blog, Real Coast Warriors, is on Facebook as well. Uh, Jimmy Hagen can be found on Facebook, and uh, yeah, and we can all be found here. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm in dairy, dairy, wondering where will I go next I'm on the road again, God knows I try to do my best I'm gonna fall in love with my friend that I know I may regret I've been busking many times, my needs have been the last But I'm gonna live, I've been betting high for what I believe Hey